Okay guys, so I decided to do a vlog for today. Today is the 15th of February. February 15th. Um, it's 3.23 right now. I wanted to vlog, do a reading vlog, but I'm probably not going to do the reading vlog until next week. Sorry about the glare from my ring light, but this was literally a last minute vlog because I got a package in the mail. And I said that once it came, I wanted to do an unboxing um, but I'm probably going to do, like, an unboxing here and then do, like, a separate video like I did with Steph's gift um, and do an actual, like, haul haul. But just wanted to come to you guys, um, just update you guys on, and that's what's been going on. So, um, my son's birthday was on Thursday, and a lot of you guys did comment on Instagram and Facebook, and I thank you so much for that. Um, we didn't do much of anything on his birthday, but um, on Valentine's Day, we took him to American Dream Mall to the Nickelodeon Studios, and he had a blast. He's actually back there now <laughs> to celebrate my, uh, well, his his father's fraternity, fraternity? Wrong. His father's soror sister, um, my son's father is in a fraternity, and he has a soror sister whose son is the same age as our son, um, and I've met her before. Um, but she took her son there today, so he took him back, and then tomorrow is his cousin's birthday. Him and his cousin are, I believe, three days apart in age. Um, so she has a little party going on at Chuck E. Cheese, so he's going to that. So he's been with his father this weekend, which is totally fine. Um, I had rehearsal Thursday, first rehearsal for Praise and Worship. I am officially going on the Praise and Worship team. I did it a couple of times back last year when my bishop pulled me out of the blue, but um, I'm officially doing it now, so I will be singing and dancing on Sunday. So pray for me, yes, and doing administrative work. But um, right now, I'm just catching up on um, my little faith planner, catching up on it. Um, I missed the last three days, the 13th to the 15th, but um, I finished up this book here, uh, Make Your Voice Heard in Heaven by Barry C. Black, the chaplain um, of the United States Senate so darn good oh my god if you guys are looking for a good book on prayer definitely check it out it is so good it's a short read um i use this use it as my devotional for the first 15 days of this month and then the next book that i'm going to be moving into is the weight by megan good and devon franklin i actually did just read the introduction only because i'm supposed to start it tomorrow which is the 16th i'm gonna be busy real real busy tomorrow um so I decided to just read the introduction today and the introduction was really good so I'm going to plug all that information in as well I'm gonna pick this book up this is the on the go devotional devotional 200 devotions for teens I want to try to read at least five of these today just to get through them um, so that I can start preparing to work on this with my siblings this is gonna be like our daily devotional that we do together and talk through um, I have the Goliath month fall because I was getting ready to do some of the things uh, as far as like the questions and stuff like that for discussion questions but um i got this beautiful package in the mail mm, i'm so excited and it came from leona and thank you so much she actually contacted me last year and asked me for my address um and because she told me she wanted to send me some stuff and i'm like i'm stoked i did already like break the box open i didn't look inside of it um she did send me a sneak peek but i don't know everything that's in here so like i'm super excited for those of you who don't know i am a freelance makeup artist um makeup artistry is definitely one of the gifts that i believe god gave me um and it's rare because in high school i didn't really care for makeup i wasn't a makeup wearer only thing i cared for was lip gloss like that was it i didn't like lipstick i didn't like makeup foundation out of that it wasn't until i turned 18 and i had my senior prom that uh, my cousin actually did my makeup and i was intrigued for some reason it just like sparked an interest and um when i started my freshman year of college i just had a major interest in it and um i started doing makeup i started out as um tbg makeup artistry which is Tres Beauty glamour which is a very beautiful glamorous makeup artistry um don't know where that name come it just came to my mind and i like the way tbg makeup artistry sounded um and then years later i just changed it to my alias which is nay denise so now i have makeup by nay denise um and i'm thinking about switching it to beauty by nay denise for some reason but uh makeup artistry was something i definitely did not care for until god actually sparked the interest in me and a lot of people say you know where makeup is wrong and blah 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 and scriptures in the bible but i don't think that makeup is wrong just like sex is not bad um god created sex i don't think that makeup is wrong i think the way we use makeup is wrong um 
I don't, my philosophy is you don't need a lot of makeup to cake on your face. You don't need to hide who you are. You can use makeup to enhance your eye color, the shape of your lip. If you want to make your cheeks, you know, pop a little more, use it to enhance, but not to completely alter. I can't stand when I watch YouTube videos and women get, are on YouTube and it's no shade to them. This is just my personal philosophy. So let me just say that this is my personal philosophy. If you do do your makeup like that, there's no shade. There's no animosity. I just want to say that because people on YouTube really do get offended. But um, my personal philosophy is that you don't need a lot of makeup on your face. I don't I don't like when people put on makeup and then when they take it off, they look like a completely different person like I, I it it irks me because i feel like you don't need to do that you don't have to look like a completely different being you can look like yourself and enhance portions of your look um i feel like I, I i love color color is like my thing i don't like the natural makeup but i love color and i feel like you can put on color without being over the top that's just me anyways i'll do a whole video on that if you guys are interested um and how that is and I, I haven't done makeup on a client in a while i actually got asked to do a wedding actually to respond to the lady but um i can't do her makeup for her wedding because i actually have an event to go to for my son's father he is getting back into his fitness shows he took off a year to spend time with our son um and like really focus on our son but um he's going back into doing the fitness shows so his first show is on the 28th so i won't be able to do that but um Anyway, got Lee on this package. I'm so excited. I want to dive in. So, <laughs> okay. So, here's the box. Okay. So, so uh, pay, pay my shirt. No mind, you guys. Okay. I know it looks a little crazy. It's a, um, a Grim Reaper on my shirt with a scythe. It came from a book box that I um, promote. So, okay. I don't know what my lighting looks like. Extra yellowy. Let me turn it a bit. Will that work? Okay. And, okay, so here's how the inside of the box looks. I'm just, I'm excited, I'm excited. Okay. This is, like, packaged so well. Okay, I took off. I'm going to keep the bubble wrap. I can always reuse bubble wrap, okay? What the... I'm trying so hard right now not to cry, you guys. Sorry if you guys hear my siblings. Um, and the lights in the house are flickering. I'm over it. But, um, Leona. Le oh, my. First off, we have this. This is from Lashy Box. I'm not sure what these are, but they feel so good and so soft. But, um, what are these? It doesn't say. They're so soft. I'm gonna have to look this up. But I have two of these little thingies. They could be makeup cleansers. Could be. Um, I know some companies that make cloths like this that you use to remove your makeup. So it could be for that. Oh, this is soft. Oh my god. And there was two in there. A dark pink and a light pink. And it's from Lashy Box. Like I said, I don't know what exactly this is. So I'm gonna have to look into that. And then I have eyelash glue in white and clear. That's awesome. And I'm sorry about my nails. I'm going to finally do my nails today. I'm still, I, I'm in awe, you guys. Like, again, you hear my sibling. Let me actually put my sign on the door before I go through this box. Hold on. Okay, guys. So I put my sign, I have a sign literally that says recording videos so that my family knows I'm recording videos and they're not loud, but I'm gonna try not to cry in this video. I've, I've done enough crying for the. I'm just like, oh my gosh. What the. I'm gonna grab the Sephora box first. The, the Sephora bag. There, there's a Sephora bag. There's notes in a. Leona. This is a sample of the Fenty Beauty Full Frontal Volume Lift Mascara. Oh Just a bag of samples and I'm, I'm like excited. Ooh. Fresh Sugar Strawberry Exfoliating Face Wash. I love exfoliating face washes. This is, ooh. Glycolic Night Serum. I used to love the Night Serum from um, Lancome. 
can't remember the name of it. It was expensive as ever. I didn't purchase it. I got it when I worked for Lancome at their counter. So, yeah, but it was two serums that they had. One was in a blue bottle and one was in, like, a cute, sweet black bottle. Can't remember. I'll throw pictures on the screen, but I love those serums. But this is cute. Ugh, I'm excited to try these. You to the People Vitamin C Superfood Cleanser. This is a polypeptide cream. So it's literally like samples in here. I'm like... This is a skin cream for dry skin. Awesome. I, I love samples. What's this? Facial cleanser. We... I'm actually in the market for a new facial cleanser and a new um, facial cream. I normally stick to Cetaphil and Clean and Clear. That's what I prefer. It's it's affordable, it's inexpensive, and it's right by the store. But um, another one of those serums. What is this? Uh, gel cleanser. Sephora coconut water cleansing wipes. I'm here for it. Okay. So, a bag of samples. I love it. I'm going to stick the samples back in this bag. So, just, okay, no, 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 this is a cleanser, I literally was just telling you guys I'm looking for a new cleanser, no. So this has, I don't, I don't even know what, it's like the little do a gift oil, but this is the Tatcha, okay, I'm not up on the beauty brands, I try to stay away from uh, the beauty portion of YouTube, I haven't been on the beauty portion of YouTube in a minute, probably over a year or two years, um, so I don't know what's like new and what's hip and all that, I just don't care, um, but, oh my gosh. So, I have the water cream. I don't even know if this is like a moisture. Is this a moisture? What, what, what is life right now? Okay, this is a moisturizer. Oh my gosh. Oh, that smells good. That smells good. So, this is a pore perfecting Japanese wild rose um, moisturizer. And then this is the cleanser that goes with it. So, yes. This is Japanese laufer fruit. And it's... Um, a moisturizer. I mean, a cleanser. What the... Guys. Oh, my God. That smells... I... I mm, I'm dumbfounded right now. What is life right now? Oh. No. Before I take stuff out, I don't know if you guys saw my last um, haul. It was some stuff that Steph had sent me from her um, makeup collection. I'll cl cl just click down the screen and go watch that video. I'm trying so hard not to cry because, like, you guys don't understand. I've been doing makeup artistry now for 10 years. 10, 11 years. Um, I started in 2009, so about 10, 11 years. Um, and when I first started out, I bought, like, the Coastal Sense palettes and stuff like that to start out, and, um, I had a pretty good clientele, and then the, as the years went on, I went and splurged on a few high-end things, um, thanks to my son's father. He actually went and bought me some very expensive things, um, for my kid, and then I got the opportunity to work at Macy's, where I worked at the Lancome counter for, a, for about four or five months, and I got a lot of my products from them and also the other beauty counters that I worked at, Chanel, MAC, and all that. Um, I'm just... To you guys, it might seem simple, but for me, I haven't worked. The last job I had was at Macy's being a beauty um, advisor. Um, and I was going to make it as a full-time Lancome um, beauty advisor, but then my family had some situations and I had to basically quit my job. Um, to help out, which sucked, 
and that was back in 2013 so from 2013 until now I haven't worked um, I've had a few clients here and there I think at the end of 2008 was it 2018 I got the or 2017 I think it was 2018 I got the opportunity to work at the um, hair salon have my own booth and everything and I've always wanted to revamp my makeup kit um my makeup kit is one thing that I really want to exude that kind of um, proper... No, I'm doing proper like this because I don't think there's a proper anything when it comes to makeup. But clientele um, can definitely be picky, choosy, and real whiny <laughs> when they see your kit. So I've always wanted to upgrade my kit a bit. And just between Steph and Leona... You guys don't understand how much that means that, like, God put you guys in a position to help me without you really knowing that you're helping me. Because I definitely want to get back into makeup artistry this summer. Um, I've slacked off for a minute just because God had to reroute my mind. And I think I talked about this in another video, how, like, I used to make makeup artistry, like, my number one priority. It literally became, like, an idol because that's literally all I wanted to spend money on, all I was researching, all I was studying up on. Um, and God had to take that away from me for a minute. But um, it's <laughs> my words. I can't, I can't, you guys, right now, my words are just over the place. Like, I'm trying to, I'm really trying, like, not to cry, because, like, th this, but, I'm okay, I'm going to show these last. So, I know what these, I know where these came from. So, I, Wow that's all I wow okay and she put type she put little notes on every, like some of the things I don't know if you guys can see I'm not gonna show you guys but um listen that is totally fine that you only swatched it once um makeup Especially when it comes to like eyeshadows and powders, they can be sanitized. As a makeup artist, I know how to sanitize my makeup. Um, the thing that you really can't sanitize are like creams. Like, okay, I can't say that because you technically can sanitize creams, but you shouldn't do that. It's weird, but um, oh my gosh. So she gave me the Pop Zombie from Ruby May Cosmetics. That looks funny. Um, but there's nine eye colors. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's gorgeous. These are some weird names. But I actually kind of get it. <laughs> so it is a zombie palette. And um, let me see if I can, like, do this so you guys can see the colors. But I'm here for the bright colors. Weird names like corpse, pus, <laughs> brains, plague, <laughs> ghoul. I am loving this undead color. This undead gorgeous these are colors that i live for i love bright bold colors oh my i'm definitely gonna be using these in um one of the upcoming book look tutorials that i'm gonna be doing i just what is this, is this from Ip okay i know about ipsy this is the nomad berlin what does it say underground it's still in the packaging what's in the Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Berlin palette. This is so pretty. Oh, I I love these colors. I'm trying to do it without showing you guys the mirror, but OMG, these colors. They definitely look like they're all shimmers, but that's totally fine. I love these colors. This NDW in Love Parade is gorgeous. NDW is here, and that purple is Love Parade. I love, love, love. I'm definitely... Y'all don't understand. I'm trying to keep it composed. I'm, I'm trying. This is gorgeous. Have a ColourPop palette. 
This is the color pop. It's all good. Press no, 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 no. Lay you guys, these are all the colors on the. <sighs> these colors are gorgeous. I. That glitter. Ooh. That's glittery. Guys, do you. Like, what is life? Y'all yeah, know I'm all about my pinks and purples, so. This color looks like that MAC eyeshadow. Oh, I can't. I think it's a blue-green. It's a pigment. Oh, my gosh. They... <sighs> I'm definitely probably going to use this palette in an upcoming video. Definitely. Because I want to do a video for um, Isaiah's Legacy. And I'm actually getting ready to read Like Flames in the Night next week. So, those two will definitely... I... I... That's three palettes, you guys. Three palettes so far. Samples. The the cleanser and the cre there's more stuff. I'll get just. What is this? Honest. No. This is the Jackie Aina palette. No. 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 The Jackie Aina palette, really, from. I know about Anastasia Beverly's hair, Beverly Hills. I want their um their pomade in their brow kit for my for my makeup kit. But the Jackie Ina. Omg. This package is stunning. The d d d mm, no words. What? Guys, this is brand new. Are you okay? Please tell me you bought this for yourself and you didn't want it, and then you like decided to give it to me. Because if you actually purchased this brand new from I... this is brand new, guys. Like, I mean, the brush still in the packaging, the protective was on it, and the the mirror still has the little the... what? I love these colors though. <laughs> Ooh, these colors are gorgeous. See, th this is my style right here. This, if you ever wonder, like, what kind of makeup looks I like, I like the pink tones, the browns, the orange. Like, I, I like, okay? I like. This, this is me. If you want a palette, if you want to know me in a palette, the Jackie Ina. The... I think, I, I hope I'm saying her name right, Jackie Ina. I know who she is. I've been watching her for years on YouTube. Um, just... The Jackie, yeah, you guys. Sorry about the lighting. It's just what I. Okay, this I know. She actually did send me a picture of this. The Becca um Prime Set and Glow Kit. She actually did send me a photo of it. So I'm here for it. Um, I have some Becca highlighters and skin finishers from Steph that are amazing. They're actually in my pro kit. Um, what? Guys. No. I think this is the same color champagne pop, so I get to keep one for myself. And put one in my kit. Yes, that's gorgeous. And this is the Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed Powder Champagne Pop. I am here. Then we have the First Light Priming Filter. So it's a, a primer, basically. Um, and then this is the Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. So we have it in there. I'm just... There's no words. And yes, when I'm done with this with this um 
haul for you guys is unboxing. I'm actually going to go on YouTube and search up these products. That's what I actually did with the stuff that Stephanie sent me. Um, I looked up YouTube videos in the beauty community just to see people use the products. Um, what's this? This is a Primera. What's this? I'm going to assume this is another moisturizer. Yeah. This one is Appline Berry Water Cream. So another moisturizer. And like I said, I'm always looking for moisturizers. This one says Hydrator and Illuminator. I'm assuming it's a moisturizer. Again, we're going to have to look it up. Ooh, that smells good. Definitely smell the berries in that one. It's just a sampler, though. And I'm totally fine with samplers. Um, I love samplers. I think they're amazing products to use. Ooh, what's this? Hourglass. Okay. I know about Hourglass. This is a Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Another small one. For those who don't know, makeup artists, we love um, travel size products. <laughs> it makes traveling and getting places easy and packing up your kit. So this one is in Veil. I, 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 I. I. Mo okay, we're gonna. I'll show that last. This is um. It says a water sleeping mask, so I'm gonna assume this is a night. Yes, this is a night moisturizer type of mask. Um, it's some. It's it. It basically goes with this. I'm assuming because it's the same kind of. I don't know. Same packaging, though. Um, but this one is for the night. So it says, apply evenly across the face. Leave the treatment overnight and rinse off in the morning. Use once or twice a week. Um, and this is a sleeping care. So I definitely will have to... Oh, that smells so bad. I'll have to try this um, ASAP. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I got brushes. Br brushes. And they're pink. And they're sparkly. And just... I love these type of brushes for... Um, under the eyes. I love putting powder under the eyes with brushes like this. Oh my gosh. This looks like a stippling brush. I'm not going to unfold it, but that looks like a stippling brush. Good for, um, a lot of the times I use it for foundations, um, but you can use it for powders and all that. What's this? What's this? Is this a liquid eyeliner? Yes! So this is from Sugar. It's a wingman waterproof micro liner in I'll Be Black. Um, y'all know how I feel about my liquid eyeliner. As y'all saw in the Daughter of Rome tutorial, I was struggling with that gel eyeliner. Alright. And then this is a powder blush. It's from Malo. And, um, is that the color? No, that's not the color. The color is pink. The brand is called Malo. And, oh, I almost broke my nail. I'm trying not to do that. I'm going to paint my nails tonight. And my toes since I gotta dance. I'm trying to not rip up the packaging of this. What time is it? Currently making some hot wings, so I have to make sure I'm paying attention. Okay. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Okay, so it's just pink. Looks like that. That's gorgeous. Ooh, that's buttery. Nice buttery um blush. I like that. So, okay. These are the last items, right? She put foam at the bottom, y'all. Leona, I, I love it. Last few items are mask and i love a good mask um i love my favorite brand of mask are the freeman masks that you can get pretty much anywhere they're affordable brand i get them anywhere from like walgreens right or from walmart but um these are a bunch of masks so this is a sheet mask this is from feel it's the bamboo charcoal facial sheet mask it's a detoxifier and a pore minimizer this is great for some reason my pores have been like getting larger and i can actually see them now on my face so i, I guess that's because i'm getting older I'm about to hit 30 in two years help me lord not even two years in a year i'll be 30 holy cow i'm turning 29 this year you guys um another thing from tachi this is a luminous dew skin mask is this a sheet 
I don't know if this is a sheet or not, but um, I'm probably going to pair this up with the actual cleanser and the cream. This is, okay. Oh, okay. These all just look fun. This is the Duft and Duft and Douft Pink Milk Mask. This is Tone Up and Radiance. Looks to be a sheet mask. Definitely looks, um, this is Korean, okay. I believe this is a Korean brand. Korean, Chinese, ja I don't know. But, uh, it says made in Korea, so I'm, I'm gonna assume it is Korean. Um, but I hope it smells good. This is, um, these two are sheet masks as well. This is Lady Green. I'm sorry, Le Day Vegan Mask. This is the Grain Mask. This is a pore refining. This one has um, Black Bean and Adelaide, and it's on a eucalyptus sheet. It says Hello Organic. Again, I don't know what language this is. Um, is this? I'm going to assume this is Korean again. Um, you guys can see the bag. But it's vegan. Um, and then this one is the vegetable mask. And it's a firming one. It has tomato and artemisia on a eucalyptus sheet. Um, so, yeah. And it tells you exactly how to use it and all that on the back. Um, and then the last two are from Dr. Huang. I think I'm saying that right. Dr. Huang Beauty Lab. Um, they're both vegan approved. This one is tea tree soothing mask. Um, well, it says, yeah, tea tree soothing mask. <laughs> Um, so this is to soothe the skin. And then this one is the Red Fruits Brightening Mask. And this is for brightening up the skin. I'm here for it. I've literally have been slacking on my skincare, like, tremendously. Terribly. Um, I am the type of person that I used to do facial mask once or twice a week, depending on the type of mask that I would do. Like, I would literally have a kind of self-care day every weekend um i fell off with that for some reason i don't know why it's kind of like i forgot myself um but i am just excited to play in all this stuff you don't i'm about to stick all the stuff in this support bag well the same ah, please don't break okay hold on um but oh i i i, I forgot they still have more items. Duh. The last four items I didn't show you guys are lashes. So, this is the Jackie Love Faux Mink Lashes. I've never... I, I, have I had mink lashes? I don't really know. I'm not... I like lashes, but I don't personally wear the lashes. I use them on my clients. So, I'm definitely going to try these. Ooh. These feel nice. I'm definitely going to try these out on myself. But um, we have those. That actually feels nice. Again, I personally don't... Oh, sorry, my hair looks crazy. I personally don't like lashes, um, just because I don't like the way they feel heavy on my eyes. But um, I do put them on my clients. This one has no brand, um, but it looks really pretty. And these are really natural, so those are gorgeous. Um, and then these are from Lashbox, which come, I guess, from this brand here. La this one says Lashy Box, but on here it says Lashbox. So, um... She got me a light, a light pink and a dark pink, and there are different lashes in each. So, girl, yes, yeah, made of glitter, glitter everywhere. But three pairs of lashes, and these are definitely, definitely out there. So we're gonna try them in a video. But it comes with three pairs. So I have the Lovely, the Lola, and the Tiffany. Um, the Lovely definitely are out there. I can get away with the Tiffany. The Lola possibly. But these Lovelies, I'm probably going to put in my kit. Because those look a little out there for me. Personally. Um, I don't mind lashes. I'll, I'll wear them. But I prefer... They can be long. But they can't be like, you know, out there. And you looking at your, your eyes like they got like spiders on them. I don't like those lashes for some reason. I'm trying to put this back in the packaging. I won't go back in the packaging. Okay, there we go. So we have those. And then these 
have oh these I probably could get away with all of these packaging super cute this one is light pink um and yeah these i can definitely get away with so it has the cookie the lulu and the lucky so these three i definitely could get away with i could wear these for myself for sure um you definitely can obviously take it out of the box you can take it out and probably use the box to store something in so that is cute i like that um let me put this back in the packaging now but I I truly appreciate this Leon. I'm sorry, I'm trying to put this back in the packaging. It won't go. There we go. Now that glitter all over me. Okay. Um, Leona, like I truly, truly appreciate this. Um, I'm probably gonna go cry my eyes out once I cut this video off. Um, because I don't wanna cry on camera. But like you just like I told Stephanie, you don't really know how much I like truly, truly appreciate this because um it's not just gonna be used on me, but I I'll, I'll be able to put this in my professional makeup kit and use it on my clients. Like just I actually have a wedding I'm doing in the summer and um I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to talk to you guys more about it soon, the wedding that I'll be doing in the summer, because it's actually for one of you lovely ladies. Yes, um, and she knows who she is. She is one of my dear sisters. I call her a sister. She's been following DOI for a long time. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in another video. So, like, I'm excited because now I have more items to use for just... <sighs> okay, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to come back. I'm going to clean up this mess. I'm going to put everything back in the box so that I can actually do, like, an actual, like, haul video. I just wanted to include this in the unboxing portion of this vlog because i'm turning this into a vlog whatever it doesn't make sense i'll be back all right so i just got three pieces of hot wings for myself to eat so i can finish my day like i said i'm just um doing my journaling portion for the faith planner um with this which is make your voice heard in heaven by barry c black um so i'm just doing that portion into the planner i was listening to music i'm gonna have to restart it over <laughs> but um yeah I'm probably going to sip on this mango lemonade, this thing here from Market Sun my mom picked up. It's so delicious. It's not as sweet as I would prefer. You probably add a little bit of sugar to it, but it's really good. Um, let me just stick all this stuff back into um, this box first. I also have to do a haul for you guys because I have another Delilah box here to share. So, we must do that. But I'll probably do that... Um, Probably over the weekend. I mean, it is the weekend. Probably, I don't know, Tuesday. I'll record that video for you guys because that's for, um, I think that's the March. Or is that the February? That's a good question. I don't know if that's the February or the March. I don't know. But, um, yes. So, I'm, I'm like... I'm grateful, I'm excited, I'm, I am, I just, I love the community and the family that I built with DOI, and it's not because you guys send me things, because I don't really care for the items, and I'm not saying it like that, but like, I appreciate everything you guys do, even down to you guys' prayers, um, and just your love and support, it means the world to me, and a lot of people ask me why I don't try and make money off of, um, DOI. I don't feel, because I know a lot of you guys are like, why do I do certain things for free, or why do I um, talk about certain things for free and not charge like other people do, but I don't think that's what God has called me to do. Um, you know, he called me to, as you can see, lights are flickering up in his house. Everything has gone haywire, but um, like he's, he. And now the phone's phone is ringing. Hold on. I don't forgot what I was saying. So what I'm going to do is um get back to this. And I guess you guys could watch me. No, probably not. Yeah, y'all can watch me while I do this. So let's fix the camera a bit. Again, I'm sorry about my shirt. It is a Grim Reaper. If you don't like it, I apologize. <laughs>
Alright guys, so I'm back. Um was doing some reading. I didn't really get that far. Oh, actually I did. Okay. Got about 12 pages into my fantasy that I'm reading. I'm listening to the audiobook. Um, I find that I like reading and listening to the audiobook. I listen to my audiobooks on three times speed, and if you think I'm joking, um, three times. <laughs> okay? There are different ways to put your speed. I start off at 1.5, and like if it's a new book that I'm just starting, I start off at 1.5, then I bump it up to 2, and then once I get to 2 times speed, I slowly increase from 2.2 to 2.4 to 2.6 to 2.8 to 3. Point. So um, I'm listening to this now on 3 times speed. I made it to page 166, um, and... This book, I have mixed feelings on, but this is a fantasy book that I'm reading. But I'm pausing because I got some packages in the mail. Um, three packages. So, I want to share with you guys what I got. I need to grab my scissors real quick. And, um, so, I'm a little bit more put together. I got my robe on because I'm a little cold. Um, and my shirt does have a Grim Reaper, and it might bother some of you, so I don't want that to, like, deter you guys from watching. Um, I did do my nails. I did gray on my nails with these black jewels. Um, and then on my toes, I have gray, but it has also, like, a, um, purple undertone. I'm gonna grab the polishes to show you guys, actually. And they're not expensive at all. They're both L'Oreal. So, this one is, um, the one I have on my nails is called Eiffel for you it's just this gorgeous gray I love this color so much L'Oreal and then the other one I have on my toes is also L'Oreal it's this color here and it's called Great Expectations and um, they're both grays the only difference is that this is more of like a true gray this gray has more purple undertones and a neutral feel to it and for some reason I like neutrals on my toes especially since I have to minister and dance tomorrow and sing so my toes gonna be out. Gotta have that done. Um, and it feels good to actually finally do my nails. I don't even know the last time I had my nails done. Um, like myself, outside of doing acrylics. And um, yeah, I'm thinking if I want to do a facial tonight. I think I'm gonna do a facial as well. I'm not gonna focus on my hair until I get it done. I'm actually gonna get my hair like professionally done. Go to the hair salon towards the end of the month. But um, packages. So the first one I already ripped open. Um, this is the Basic Bible Atlas, A Fascinating Guide to the Land of the Bible by John A. Beck. I do own two books from him and two of his DVD studies. One is called Something with the Land. I don't honestly remember it. Is it on my shelf? Actually, let me see if I have it right here on the shelf. If it's not up here, then... I'm trying to see, but no, it's not on my immediate reads. Is this it? Nope, that's not it. Okay, so... I forgot what the book is called. It's on my shelf. I have them. Um, but it's two books that he has out. Uh, let me see if they have it on here. Mm. No, they don't have it written on the back exactly what it is. But I do have two of his other books. No, but I have some, uh, some of his other books. But this is a atlas sort of book. Um, on the back, I'll read what it says. It says, the Bible tells the story of God meeting real people in real time and place, yet we really pause to wonder why there. Um, so this just goes through. It has colorful maps and illustrations. Um, it walks you through Eden to, G to Egypt, Persia, Bethlehem to New Jerusalem. So, um, yeah. It's literally just maps, you guys. It's a book with maps in it. Um, It's a lot of text, but you also have maps, and the bottom of it tells you exactly. So this one is just after the resurrection of Jesus. Um, what's this one? I just saw it. Some of you guys hear the drums. I don't know what happened to that page I just saw. Here we go. This is Jesus in Jerusalem. So I'm here for that. I love stuff like that. So um, this one is a tribal land allotment. So this one shows you the tribes. I like that. Um, so yeah, and gives you some background information. Great one for studying. This is going to go hand in hand with my um, Rose Bible Charts and Timelines Volume 1. Great. Okay, so moving on. So this is from Baker Books, right? Yeah, I got this one from Baker Books. Um, they sent me an email about it and I did request that one of the books that they had available. 
Um, this is from Thomas Nelson. So, this could be the Colleen Global book I'm waiting on. Is this it? Yes, it is. Okay. So, this is the. I said Global. Her name is Cobble. Colleen Cobble, um, One Little Lie. It's a part of the Pelican Harbor series. I'm not sure if this is book one or not. This is classified as... It doesn't say. This is an art copy, though. Here's the cover. Um, I got this for two Instagram tours that I'm doing. Um, I don't remember. I know she writes, like, Christian contemporary, Christian suspense novels. Um, so I'm trying to remember. This might be book one in her new series, but, um, it doesn't specifically say. So I'll put on the screen exactly what the genre is for this. It may be, oh, <laughs> it says it in a little blurb. It's romantic suspense. So yeah, I'm not going to read the synopsis because you guys will hear about it in my haul. But, um, yeah, I have an ARC copy of this. This comes out March 3rd. Uh, probably not going to be able to read this before then, but we'll try to squeeze it in. I don't know. But, um, yeah, this is the first in a new series that she's writing, and it's romantic suspense. So, you guys know I've been intrigued by romantic suspense lately, so we have that. And then I got this in the mail. This right here. And if you guys can see, it is from Crossway. Um, I don't purchase from Crossway directly. I normally get, like, review things from them, so this is definitely a Bible. And... They did send an email to me a couple weeks ago, about, well, about a week ago, um, asking if I was interested in reviewing one of their newest Bibles, and I filled the form out, said I would, and, um, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Wow, this is gorgeous. My box is a little beat up, but it is okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. So this is the ESB, of course, because Crossway makes the ESB. My box is beat up, unfortunately, but that's okay. It's the ESB Bible with Creeds and Confessions in True Tone Black. This is the box. The front of it. The spine. Gorgeous. The back of it has some information. And again, this is not like a full video. Um, and then you see the Bible here. So, oh. God, that just feels so beautiful. I've never had a Bible that had um, these ridges. Like, all of my Bibles have been, like, basic Bibles, if you will. This feels really nice. It does have two ribbon bookmarkers on them. So, oh, I love that font. That font is huge. I wish this came in the, King, the New King James, because that's my preferred Bible. I'm currently looking for a reader Bible to use when I am out at speaking engagements. I don't want to take my huge study Bible. I want a Bible like this small that has sorry about that just got my dinner <laughs> um my mom bought me my dinner so i'm gonna put this here real quick just so i can show you guys that and then i'll eat while i'm reading but um yeah i want to buy this small with this kind of font size this font size is great i think it's a 10 point font yeah 10 point lexicon type font um smith's own binding and all that so i will have a, a in close review on this i also have a few other bibles i still need to review for you guys but um this looks i'm going to put that down turn this off and charge my computer up and i'm going to drink my mango lemonade i might have to go put some sugar in this though um get all this garbage off my floor because i have garbage on my floor right now um from opening these packages and this is so good so good and not sugary but i need sugar but um that's what i'm gonna do now so i'll come back to you guys later on i guess um when i dive into tribulation for it so i'm gonna read like i said the 150 pages of this book that i have to read which is my high fantasy that i'm currently reading um, and then I'm going to dive into Tribulation Force and come back to you guys with my thoughts because you guys know I have bills. I have bills. So, I'll come back to you guys later. Hey guys, so it's getting late. Um, late as in like I'm getting tired. <laughs> 
today has been just a chilled day um I want to start doing more vlogs where you guys can like see how I go about my day this wasn't like a full-blown day in the life kind of thing because I really didn't record until I got my package from Leona but um yeah so I'm almost done with what I have to read for this book I literally have maybe 30 pages to go but because it's getting late 304 I'm on 281 right now and I have to get to page 304 so I don't have a lot left I'm literally I'm on chapter 20 I need and then I need to read chapter 21 and then I'm done with my reading for today so I'm gonna come back to this in a second but um, I made me some hot chocolate I mean some hot chocolate because we need hot chocolate for um, this evening I'm a little cold and um, we got the flickering to stop with the lights um, my mom had to actually contact the landlord and let her know but so I'm going to get into my reading and um, I do that through the Holy Bible app um, I'm doing currently doing four plans on the Holy Bible app I'm trying to keep it up I'm trying to keep it up um, so I'm doing four plans excuse me sorry I completed one today I'm doing the Roaring Twenties fast with some of you ladies I'm doing the Bible in a year with one of you ladies or I don't know if it was from YouTube that um, asked me to join in and with this one we're doing Old Testament and New Testament um, I'm already through Leviticus so I have to catch up and read Mark 2 and then I've already read numbers 2 and 3 so I need to read Mark 3 um, and then then I'm doing the Bible Project one, Misu Andrews, and for that one I also skipped two days, so I need to read number seven, and then eight, nine, and ten. So the way that I do this is I'm actually going to start with the New Testament first. I normally do Old Testament, then New Testament, but today I just want to get through the New Testament first. So, um, I, okay, so this is the Bible I'm using, the Devotional Bible for Women, King James. This is from Ellie Claire. Um, she is the creator of a bunch of those pretty Bible tabs you guys have saw in my previous Bibles. Love her Bible tabs so much. You can check them out on Amazon. So, um, I use the ribbon for the Old Testament, and then I use one of my little magnetic bookmarks for New Testament. So, I don't know what that is. But, um, right now I have to do two and three. So, what I do is I literally just highlight as I'm reading. If you guys can see, like, I just highlight... Um, I do have a key. It's My key is pretty simple. I highlight in yellow for anything that's important to me. Gray is for anything that has to do with names. Locations, I do in brown. Anything that I want to pray about um, is in purple. Anything that's personal or um, like a reflection, like a scripture that speaks out to me personally concerning a situation, I highlight that in pink. Um, anything that I want to define, I do in green. Then I use blue for any Old Testament references within the New Testament. Um, and then orange I use for like when there are words or sayings repeated several times within that chapter or within that book. I use orange. Um, obviously, I have hundreds of other colors outside of this uh, pack that I have. I use the Mount Liner Brush um, 15 Count Pack. I'm hoping they come out with the other two packs. With the brush tips, I'm not sure if they have them yet, but um, this is for people that are into calligraphy. I don't use it for that. I literally just use it to highlight, and it's literally just a brush tip. Um, I'm trying to open it without, but it's a brush tip, and then the other end is a fine tip. Um, but this fine tip is a lot more finer than the uh, like the original highlighters that they had. Um, which I do still love the original highlighters. Those are my OGs. Those are my babes. Um, but I just, I love the zebra mount liners. And I know that some of you guys have mentioned before that for some reason they bleed through your Bibles. It might be the amount of pressure you're applying because when I use my highlighters, um, I don't press into the paper. Especially with these, I don't have to do that because they're a brush tip. So I literally just slide across the page and it does wonders. Um, and, you know, this Bible is very thin. <laughs> this is thin Bible paper in here. trying to show you guys how thin this paper is because I don't know if it's going to show the bleed through here but it's so thin that even pencil comes through um, so you can see on this side I don't know if it's going to show in the video but um, pencil you can see through but um, it doesn't bother me I'm not one of those people that it bothers so you know 
Um, so I'm just going to fix my magnetic bookmark. And I got this from Dollar Tree. It just says peace on it with a dove. I'm just going to move my magnetic bookmark over. And what I do, I'm in the, the section. I have it as the King James because I also listen to the audio Bible as I um, read through. So I have my highlighters out. I'm going to actually bring you guys down a bit so you guys will see how I do this. But um, yeah, you're going to watch me do my readings. Um, like I said, I have it already open, Mark 2. Again, it's in the King James because I do listen to the audio Bible as I read because this is the King James. Um, so yeah. quick um so i read mark two and three um so i'm caught up on that i can check all four and five um so now i'm gonna go to numbers seven in a second but i'm um, pretty much all that i do is i highlight like i said and if there's anything that sticks out um i'll write so you guys can see that um what I was doing was I did have a journal where I was like jotting down my notes, but then that got tedious to me, so I just stopped doing that. So right now I'm just highlighting, um, and pretty much what I highlight I know because I have this key in the front, and it's really simple, um, and it's speaking out to me. So that is that. Um, Mark two, really, he just talks about the. Um, I know this story better, I believe, in Matthew and in John. I think it was in John. About the guy that was um, dropped down through the roof. So that's what they were talking about in Mark 2, verses 4 and 5. And I just put strong faith. Um, because these men, they couldn't get into the house because the house was crowded. And because they had their friend, they knew that Jesus could heal. They took it upon themselves to take apart that house. Like, they didn't care who house it was. They didn't care how much it cost. Like, they took the roof apart and they put their friend down through the roof so that Jesus could heal him and I thought that was amazing because it says that Jesus saw their faith not the man's faith he saw the faith of the friends and it's just like a lot of my friends they're going through things and it's like can I be the one that allows Jesus to move in their life can my faith allow him to move in their life my faith for them because it's not a personal faith thing it's like they didn't have faith in themselves they had faith for their friend that he could be healed by Jesus if they only just got him in front of Jesus. And my thing is, do I have enough faith to believe that God could do things for some of my friends? And some of my friends are going through some like tough situations. And I have major faith for a lot of them to get, you know, what they need. So I just, I thought that was important for me to highlight. Um, anything else? The part about him, how he said... Um, they that are whole have no need for the position. So it's not that Jesus isn't here for everyone, but Jesus is here for those who need to be um, brought into the sheepfold to bring those who need to be brought into the family. Um, he's not just here for those who've been found. Um, you know, he's here for those who are completely lost. And then the part with the Sabbath, um, how the Sabbath was made for the man and not the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, and man was not made for the Sabbath. A lot of people tend to go hard on the Sabbath day. Um, sorry about the, the way the camera is set up, but I'm going to get back into my reading shortly. But a lot of people, um, they... This, this is pretty much him breaking down how, um, you know, man tends to really try to obey by the law literally in every way. Um, we know that the Sabbath day is a day of rest. But then he goes and asks, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? So the thing is, on the Sabbath day, which is a day of rest, um, according to me and my beliefs, I believe that the Sabbath day is on Sunday. Some people believe it's on Saturday. It depends on what your religion is. But I'm Christian non-denominational, <laughs> so I believe that the Sabbath is on Sunday. And though the Sabbath is a rest day... Um, it is a day of when you don't work. 
I do believe that you should still be doing the work of God for the kingdom of God. Um, and if someone is in need, especially on the seventh day, you are to help them, not just stand there and watch somebody die. And unfortunately, back in those times, the Sabbath was taken literally and they didn't do anything, even if someone was dying, which is really crazy. So um, I thought that was important. Um, then he talks about how then it talks about how he ordained the 12 disciples and who they are. And um, I that's just personal for me because I was recently I'm saying recently, but that was like last year. Wow. Last year I was ordained. Um then he talks about a divided kingdom and things like that. And this is in chapter 3, so I'm like going ahead. But pretty much that's what I do. And I, like I said, I just write little notes in the Bible. Nothing crazy. Um, again, this is not like an in-depth study session. This is just me reading the Bible as a book because I've never read the Bible front to back ever in my life. I normally stick to the Gospels, Psalms, and Proverbs. Pretty much all that I've read. Literally, um... You know, I've never read a lot of the prophets. I've never read a lot of the letters. So I'm taking this year to really just read it through. I'm not doing anything extensive, but I think it's important that we at least read the Bible front to back at least once in your life. Um, I used to think it was retarded to do that, but I think it all depends on your understanding, your relationship with God, and your spiritual maturity. Because if this was me, like, two years ago doing this, I'd be lost. I mean... I loved me. Genesis was amazing. Exodus was good. And then we got to Leviticus. And I was like, what? Mm. No, literally, guys, like Leviticus, I don't have that many highlights. Leviticus is just laws. Laws. Like, it, there's no highlights. <laughs> there's a few. A few highlights in Leviticus. But I mean, like, I was just like, bro, kill me now. And numbers is like, <laughs> kill me now that's how I feel so I'll be happy to get through um the first five books when I used to read um when I read through Genesis Exodus and Leviticus before I got bored and gave up literally I stopped in the middle of the reading plan that I was doing and I, I couldn't do it but because I have a better understanding of um the word in general and who God is and an understanding of um my relationship with God it helps me to be able to read this with a different perspective and a different eyesight um and i'm actually gaining some things so you know i actually got a lot more out of numbers so far than i did when i read um leviticus because leviticus was literally about like offerings like i actually not too long ago i just read about the jealousy offering like what there's literally there literally was an offering for jealousy i'm trying to remember where that was yeah, it's in Numbers 5. They talk about the jealousy offering. And I was like, bruh, what? Like, I've never heard of that. So it's really interesting to me. And um, as I'm reading, every now and then there comes up this uh, devotional. I think I need to actually catch up on these devotionals. <laughs> I think there are two devotionals I passed and didn't read through. But normally what I do, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Normally what I do is I read through the devotional. And I highlight and underline things that stick out to me. I normally use pink highlighter for these, of course. And I use a pencil in this Bible because this Bible, like I said, is really, really thin Bible paper. Like that old school Bible paper. It's an all now. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do this devotional after I get through 7 through 10. Ugh, and it looks like it's going to be another boring one. And it's, it's, it's terrible. I don't like to say the Bible is boring, but I'm, I'm not going to lie, like. I was just like, bro, Leviticus, I was falling. <laughs> Luckily, I'm listening to the audio Bible, um, the, like the audio as I read it, but it was putting me to sleep, like, bro, putting me, and it's, it's, it's nothing wrong with saying that the, there's certain parts of the Bible that bore you, I'm just saying, there, there's not, like, Genesis was, like, real interesting to me, because I was like, there's too much trauma, you know, the first families, they were doing the most, Adam and Eve, Noah, all of them, they were... <laughs> Abraham, a Abram, excuse me, Abram, before he became Abraham, and then you get to the 12 tribes, you're just like, bro, they're crazy. Like, these are real people that went through real things that we go through, and we don't really notice it. Like, the situation with, um, Sarah was repeated twice after her. Meaning the part where she gave up, um, her handmaiden to Abram to birth a son. Um, 
that happened twice more with Rachel and Leah. And I was just like, girls, get it together. Stupidity. But I'm enjoying this read-through of the Bible without having to do extensive. And I think it's going to help me even more because the things that I'm highlighting when it's time for me to actually go back and study, I can pull this out and go through the scriptures that I highlighted and pick those out to really dive deep. So I'm really enjoying it. But I'm going to read seven, number 7 through 10 now. And I am listening to this on 30 times, two times speed, not three times, two times if I'm not mistaken. Hold on. Yeah, it's on two times speed. So, you guys see two times speed. I listen to it that quickly. Um, if I could go faster, I would. <laughs> but, yeah, so like I said, I'm on number seven and we're going to play it now. Okay guys, so let me move the slide out the way real quick. Um, I'm done with my Bible reading. Pretty much, I didn't get much out of um, Numbers 10 or 9. Um, one thing I am finding out though throughout Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers is that Moses actually communicated with God on, a, on just about a daily basis. Um, and what I mean is that it always says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and the Lord spake unto, like, it literally says that a lot of the times, and I'm noticing that, that he had, um, such an intimate relationship with God, that he could communicate with God, not just see him, um, and I don't mean, like, physically see him, because obviously God told him that he couldn't see him, obviously, but, um, he was able to communicate with God on a level that the others could not communicate, and one thing I'm grateful for is that Jesus came, and, um, he came to reconcile us back with God and that we personally can communicate with him through Jesus um, and that we don't have to go through all of the laws because they had a lot of laws to do. I mean, there was offerings for everything. I mean, that jealousy offering, I'm still stuck on it. And that was for like, I believe that was for like husbands when their wives cheated or something like that. I was just blown away when I read that because they don't teach you about that. Literally, um, it says... Yeah, Numbers, if you don't believe me, it's Numbers 5, verse 18, down to 31. Read that and you'll, it, it's, I, I literally put what I, I highlighted. <laughs> it says the jealousy offering and then I put what because I've never heard of that before, but it was interesting. So now what I'm going to do is um just read through the devotional. I dropped my pencil. But I'm going to read through the devotional, um, and I think I'm going to end it here. I'm probably not going to get a chance to get to this. It's 1024 right now, and I still, like I said, have about 30 pages of this to read, which is going to take me, let me see how long this, now the thing with it is, I have this on three times speed. I read faster than the audiobook does, unfortunately, which means I'm a fast reader. Hmm. Yeah, the chapter I'm reading right now is like an hour long. These chapters go anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour long, which is slightly annoying. Not an hour long, but like 45 minutes long um, with the person reading. Now, altogether, this audiobook is about 28 and a half hours. You guys can see that. 28 and a half hours. I've already gotten into 13 hours of this. Thank God they have three times speed because I couldn't do it on two times speed. I just, I would give up. Um, so, let's see. If I was reading this on two times speed, it would take me about 14, 13, 14 to 15 hours. Um, but because I'm reading this on three times speed, it should take me about 10 hours. But, again, I'm reading, um, in four days. So, 10 hours, divide that by four. I'm reading about two and a half hours a day of this book. But again, 
that's two and a half hours via audio i'm actually reading quicker than the audio so if i normally get to the end of a chapter before the um audio book gets to the end of a chapter i just go ahead and skip to the next chapter um pretty much i use the audio book to start me get like to start me into the chapter because this does swallow three different perspectives and um there is Serene, who is a princess, female, of course. Then you have Rayodin, who is a prince. And then you have Horathian, who is a priest. Um, and they all have different voices. So, And then you have like several thousand other characters. So I use the audiobooks to help me get into that character's perspective and into their sort of tone. And then as the audiobook is reading, I then read ahead of the audiobook. <laughs> Which, it sounds insane, but it works. It helps me to keep up with my reading, you know. And sometimes, like, I'll just put my bookmark in the book, where, whatever page is on, and listen to the audiobook until something important pops up. And then I'll open up the book, find out where it is, and then do my markings. It depends. Pretty much just how I was reading today. But, um, yeah, I'm going to quickly read this. This one says God's Great Heart. It's on numbers 624 to 26. Actually, let me go back to that real quick. 24 to 26. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, where it says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Okay, so it's God's great heart. Um, are you aware of God's desire to fill your life with an abundance of good things? God wants to bless you. It is his great joy to give lavishly and generously to those whom he loves. And his love is indiscriminate. I think that is so true. And I want to make sure that I highlight that. Um... His love is indiscriminate. A lot, a lot of people believe that. Then it says, are you receptive to God's blessings? Aware that in relationship with God, you are also in a position to experience his abundance. God cares for you, even concerning the smallest details of your life. Well, it says day, but I'm saying your life. Um, did you know that he is with you to bless you when things go wrong? I think I need to highlight that as well, because sometimes I'll be like, wow. You know, there's a lot of things that happen in my life that I'm just like, why? You know, like, why did you allow it to happen? And, you know, sometimes people be like, don't question. But I don't think there's anything wrong with questioning God. It's all about the intention that you have behind questioning. Are you questioning him um, with this sort of authoritative type of thing that you have? Or is it just a genuine, like, confused kind of question? Um, when I question God, it's not to say that I'm more powerful and more mighty than him. No, it's genuinely like I'm trying to under I'm I'm asking this question so that I can either get an answer from him and if he chooses not to answer, of course, cuz sometimes God does not choose to answer your questions. He he wants you to really go through your question on your own. So it really just depends on your heart. So um yeah. Um he gives you peace. So I'm just highlighting something else real quick. Um, world the trouble, the Lord provides the calm that allows you to pillow your head at night. Yes, that's true. Do you trust him when your peace is disturbed? My God. Mm. Are you reciprocally attentive to him because God is attentive to you? Okay. That was interesting. It was it was a lot more like asking questions more than anything. But um I really, really, really wanted to get into tribulation course today. But I'm gonna just read that tomorrow. Um so tomorrow Sunday. So I think what I'm gonna do for Sunday is um get into this book on my way to church. Cause okay, the thing is I go to two churches, okay? Three technically, but two. Um we take my little brother my middle brother is what I'm going to say. My middle brother. The middle brother that I have. Because I have three brothers. I have an older brother. I'm the oldest. But the second oldest is my brother. Then my other brother is the middle brother. And I have a baby brother. So um, we take the middle brother to the first church. He has to play it. My mom goes into the service and stays for praise and worship. Which is like 30 minutes or so. Um, really not 30 minutes. More like 15, 20. But whatever. Um, so... She goes into there, then she comes out, and then we take my other brother, the older brother, to um, his church. But we go to, okay, so we live in Jersey. We go to Harlem first to go take my brother to Brooklyn to his church. We go back to Harlem. My mother goes into the service, which she'll spend like probably an hour in the service because that's by the time we get there, their services are ending. Um, and then 
we pick up that brother from Harlem to go to our church, which is in the Bronx. So I pretty much have a good amount of time to do some reading. So I'm going to try to tackle these two books tomorrow. Um, Kingdom of Souls, this is the YA fantasy I'm reading. I really just want to finish the last half of this book, but we'll see. Um, and then I want to start Tribulation Force tomorrow as well. So those will be my books for Sunday. I already did my reading of The Weight today. It was for tomorrow, but I knew that Sunday was going to be crazy. Um, because I'm singing, dancing, and doing my administrative work, of course. So, yes. But I'm done for the evening. I'm going to finish this last bit of hot chocolate. Listen to the last 30 pages of this and um, then call it a night. I already have my dress out. I just have to iron it in the morning. I have to wear black. This is going to be the first time that we're singing um, Unified as Praise and Worship. Um, after having our first rehearsal, we have a rehearsal next week. So I'm excited. I'm nervous. It's been a while since I've sung. Um, I used to sing in high school and in middle school I sung a lot of the times on the choir, um, the youth choir. So um, it's it's been a while since I sung. <laughs> um, I did sing, of course, last year, maybe t two Sundays on Praise and Worship. But um, I wasn't serious about it. This time I'm serious about it and I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. So, I'm done for the evening. I'm actually a little tired. So, what I'm going to do is probably throw a facial on my face right now while I read the last 30 pages of this. Um, and just enjoy my evening. My son won't be home till tomorrow night. Um, maybe Monday morning. Fingers crossed. Because there's no school president today, of course. So, fingers crossed he'll be home Monday morning. I actually kind of miss my baby. Um, we still haven't sung happy birthday here. So, like, I still have his cake. I got him an ice cream cake and some cupcakes. Um, luckily the cupcakes are good until the 20th, so when he comes home Monday we'll be singing happy birthday to him um, and my mom's as well, because my mom's birthday is on the 6th and his is on the 13th, but um, yeah, I'm pretty much relaxed, so I'm going to do a facial, take my glasses off, I, I like, I like my glasses, like I'm blurry, it's, it, everything is blurry right now, so pay me no mind, but I don't, I don't like these dark circles, okay, part of me is to blame because I don't sleep, I'm a night owl, um, but I'm like really getting tired because I guess I was pretty active and busy today. So whatever. Um, I'm going to put all these piles of books away that are on my bed. I'm actually going to take some book photos. I need to take a lot of book photos. So I'm going to do that. I guess while I'm listening to the last 30 pages of this book. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll chat with you guys in the next video. I'm going to try to do these sort of vlogs, um, every week. Probably do like a weekend vlog since I don't have my son. But I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. Because I want to do like a weekend vlog thing. But um, I don't I don't know. So we'll see. I'll probably do like a weekend reading vlog. Depending on the books that I have to read for the week weekend. If, don't quote me on that. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.